Okay, since it's a fantastic day out, um, I'm not going to shoot this in the in the man cave. <laughs> I'm going to um, uh, shoot it out here. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I've got a uh, new trigger for my uh, my 308. It's a Timney tactical trigger. I think it might be called a Timney tactical bench rest or something like that. There's a few different names on it. But it's for the Remy 700, and it has a an adjustable um, adjustable uh, trigger shoe. Uh, my biggest problem with my old uh, trigger, uh, it was 2.8 pounds, which isn't overly heavy and is absolutely perfect if you're hunting or stalking. Uh, but I had uh, a problem. My fingers aren't very long. I don't know the average length or not. But um, when I was pulling the trigger. I could never get the top of my finger around the trigger. I was always putting a little bit of left pressure on it, and as I pull it back more, I was putting a bit of right pressure on it. I could never pull it straight back, just because I could never get my finger, by the time I got my finger forward of it enough to pull it straight back, the, the shot was already fired. Um, and I didn't notice this until uh, uh, shooting at a competition lately, where all my groups were, um, I don't think I really missed high or low at all. It was just left or right by a couple of inches, but it doesn't take very much to miss for a couple of inches at 300 meters. So what I wanted to do is I got the uh, Timney Timney or the Timney uh, Tactical. Um, it's set at the moment for something like uh, 12 ounces, which is it's light. It's uh, less than a pound, and. Um, it's uh, it's not really the weight that that I find brilliant about it. It's the adjustable trigger shoe, and you can adjust it for a bit, a bit of cant, and you can adjust it uh, in and out as well for the length of your finger. So I um I made it the same length as my old Timney trigger, and I reinstalled it into the gun. Well, you can actually change it without having to extract the the action from the from the gun or the chassis. You can uh, just get a little um, it's a tiny little Allen head key. You can loosen it, put it where you need, and tighten it up again. Uh, so I've brought it to the the length that the other Timney came from out of the box and was unadjustable, um, to where I couldn't get my finger around the top of it, um, and I couldn't pull straight back. So that's where it is now. And I'm just going to shoot a three shot group and see what it's like. There's a little crosswind here, but not really enough to make any difference at 100 meters. And what we're going to do is then I'm going to shove the trigger back and. The way I like it is with a slight outwards cant, only maybe three or four degrees, and uh, I'm going to shoot the three shots again, just to see is there a difference, if there's any difference. Uh, but my theory is that uh, now that I can get my finger in front of the trigger, that I'm having much, uh, much more consistent shooting, where I could I get hit bullseyes before, but uh, I'd often pull a shot, and I think that's the main reason. Um, so we'll cut now in a minute to uh, we'll stick up a couple of shoot and see targets and uh, we'll um, do three or four shots at each and we'll see how they end up. Okay, so you can see downrange there's a, a box with two shoot and see targets. Uh, I'm going to go for the left one with the trigger uh, slightly too far forward and you can see here that I can't, um, with this pistol grip, I have to stretch or, or wrap, twist my hand around it to get a good back pull. My natural position is here, which makes me pull it uh, slightly to the left. So that's the way it was originally, and that's where we're going to try it now. So this is a cold bore shot. We have a suppressor, so you won't have to cover your ears. So we're going for the left target.
that one was pulled slightly left uh, from pushing out the trigger. First two are fine though, but that's my typical problem. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to um, go and uh, bring this trigger back to where I feel a little bit more comfortable with it, and uh, we'll try the shot again. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to shoot the right uh, shoot and see targets. I have brought the trigger blade back to where I hold the pistol grip, and it's just square up my finger, so I can pull it straight back without having to put any sideways pressure on it. So um, I'm going to fire three shots at the right hand side target, and hopefully I'll have a better grouping than the first one. Mind you, the first one's kind of hard to beat, but um, let's have a go with this. When I did have the problems with the uh, the trigger pulling it, it was nearly always uh, pulling it to the left, like you've seen in the first shot with the third um, with the third round. Um, but uh, I'm gonna have to run this test, I think, at a at a longer distance to get a proper confirmation. But it's showing the uh, the trend that I want to see at a hundred. And um, it's uh, it's definitely shown improvement with the lighter trigger and um, a closer trigger guard. So we'll go up and take a look at these shots, and um, we'll see what kind of pattern we had. Okay, here's the two targets I was shooting at. This is the first one here. Uh, it's at 100 meters. It's a little bit of wind, not really enough. I suppose maybe enough for uh, two millimeters of drift. Not a whole lot, but. Um, these two here are my first two, and this is my last one. Now this is very indicative of what it used to be like before with the heavier trigger, where in pulling the trigger, um, because it was so long, I couldn't pull straight back, so I'd pull slightly to the right, causing the gun to drift uh, left. Um, you can see here, when I brought back the trigger shoe to where my finger was nice and square, um, you can see the, the stacked group. Um, these guys here, it's more what I'm getting now. It's much stacked group. It's actually a tiny bit tighter. I don't have the calipers with me here, but um, where these are almost all breaking into the ring of the previous bullet hole. These are all intersecting bullet holes, and um, it's uh, it's a lot more reliable when uh, I don't have to uh, worry about uh, pulling the shot. Now, what really made me um, change is when I was uh, shooting sometimes especially trying to do precision stuff I'd be pulling on the trigger to such an extent even though it was only three point or 2.8 pounds that I'd have to check that the safety was off um, it's just at that point it was just too heavy and I couldn't bring it down any further safely um, now when I mean safely I would uh, if I brought it down past 3.8 and um, I got a plastic hammer 
and hit the action with the bolt cocked, the uh, the bolt would fire. That's not a safe condition. It's not likely that you're going to have to hit it with a hammer. I could never get it to fire by slamming the bolt, but if I could get it to fire by hitting the ang the action at any angle with a plastic hammer, that was uh, that was no good for me. It had to be a hundred percent safe, and uh, that is as low as I could get then at the uh, two point eight pound with the new. Uh, trigger it was out of the box at I think it was about uh, nine or ten ounces even at that um, that uh, trigger pull weight I could hit it uh, with a plastic hammer could not get it to fire a bolt um, which proves to me it's totally fine um, there's quite a lot of sear engagement whatever way they uh, change the mechanics of it uh, there's still quite a lot of sear engagement, even at eight, eight ounces. Um, that no matter how much of a slam you give it, it's not going to uh, to release the bolt. But um, yeah, that's my little test out on on the little timely or timely um, tactical trigger. It's a very good trigger. Its downsides, though, are obvious from the website. It does not have a bolt release. So if you have a Remington that um, has a bolt release in front of the trigger you push up and lift the lever like all stock Remington's and some aftermarket um, actions it's a it's a pain because you have to open it up and you got to use a little tool or something to push down the uh, push down the catch to take out your bolt the other problem is it's not a great hunting trigger because it does not have a safety um, now the way I hunt usually well always is I don't have anything in the chamber if I see uh, my target I'll line up then I'll load the chamber and I'll fire I don't ever walk around with a loaded chamber um, I've never trusted a safety even if I had a safety I wouldn't trust it uh, but for just uh, target practice for long range stuff uh, bench rest whatever you want to shoot with it um, you don't really need the safety because you're lying on the range it's safe to fire when your range officer says so you uh, put manually feed your bullet you uh, pull your trigger and you just keep going through your routine um, it's uh, it's great for what it does those are two downsides mechanically it's fantastic I would prefer if it had a little bit tighter trigger there's a little bit of slop left to right just a little shake which wasn't there with the other trigger but um, that's just me it's it's not really a downside it just I don't like the sound of a little rattle but uh, yeah, that's my uh, my little review on the uh, the Timney Tactical Trigger for the Remington 700. Um, if you thought this was uh, helpful in any way, you can uh, give me a subscription. And uh, I have a lot more videos coming up, some pretty cool ones with some uh, pretty nice hardware that's been sent down. And um, we should have a lot more videos coming up now because it's summer and it's not raining constantly. So we'll see you next time. Bye now.